the only thing better than starting the weekend is starting the weekend with sunrise cereals hi everybody i'm your host richard pochard and we are into the home stretch of junior g-men starting the dead end kids let's take a look at a couple of people who might be minor characters here but had truly impressive careers Russell Hicks plays Billy's father, Colonel Barton. He was born in Maryland in 1895 and began his career in movies in 1915. Over the next 40 years, he would compile an astounding 330 acting credits in movie and television. His bearing and resident voice made him an ideal choice to play military commanders, scientists, judges, and business executives. Although considered a primarily serious dramatic actor, he appeared in a number of comedies as well, playing Porthos in the Ritz Brothers' farcical take on the Three Musketeers, or in this scene from The Bank Dick, where he out-talks and out-bamboozles the king of bamboozlers, W.C. Fields. The pretty blonde, Mary, who Jip keeps trying to impress, is played by Florence Halop, born in New York in 1923, and yes, she is the sister of serial star Billy Halop, which is perhaps why she and Billy never flirt in the movie. But don't think for a moment that Florence was riding on Billy's coattails. Though he had a long career in movies, her medium of choice was in television, where she had a long career doing mostly comedy. She worked with legends like Lucille Ball, George Burns, Dick Van Dyke, Danny Thomas, Betty White, and Carol O'Connor, among others. By the early 80s, jobs were starting to dry up for her when she was cast as Mrs. Huffnagel on the dramedy Saint Elsewhere. Originally intended as a one-off character, her performance was so well-received that the writers added her into 17 episodes that season. It couldn't have happened at a better time. Selma Diamond had just passed away, and Florence was asked to replace her in what would be her last and possibly most beloved role. Your Honor, I found a medical book. Now there's a chapter on emergency child delivery. That's great. Make four copies of that right away, Flo. I'll, I'll get right on it. Flo, what? what's the first thing it says to do? Uh, keep the mother from panicking. <laughs> Let's hope they're all that considerate. Sadly, she only played the role of bailiff Flo Kleiner for one season. Two months after the season three finale aired, Florence Halep lost her fight with cancer. Aren't we fortunate that we still get to enjoy the work of all these fine performers through film and video? And with that, let's get into Chapter 11, Descending Doom.
We just want to tell you your brake lights are out! Truck drivers think they own the road! That's another fine mess they've gotten the themselves they into. I won't know tomorrow. Even if they were alive and the car hit the water, they'd be drowned before we could get to them. Nothing we can do. You stay here, Duke. I'll send some of the boys to help you recover the bodies. Come on, fellas, i got to get the hideout. There, you see? There was something you could do. On first place for our homecoming float. We certainly busted up this joint, all right, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, we got these men on a lot of records. That ought to give us some information. No other prisoners? No, they were prepared for a quick getaway, and they made one. Did you see Colonel Barton, my father? Torch gang took all the prisoners with him. All right, Watson, you and Harris take these men back to town. Then, Dean and Scott, follow the river road south until you meet Duke. Take the bodies out of the wreck sedan, fingerprint them, and take them to the morgue. Harry, boys. I want to thank you all for your part in breaking up one of the strongholds with a flaming torch. We ain't through those torches yet. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, let's go. Come on, let's go. Well, Harry, this junior G-man, Billy and his boys seem to be measuring up. They sure do. Jip uh, alone has grown day, another three inches. Plan to run down the torch gang. Did he tell you what the plan was? No, he just said to come by his place today and have it all mapped out. Okay. Okay, sir. Come on, Mitch. Oh boy, I can't wait to pass out the invitations to my bar mitzvah. It's up to us to get there. What about here? No, we're not going to. Three more mats from the gas station. Right. Well, 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 okay, I'll take them out. Let's you. Get, get up here with the phone. Where are we patrolling? Right over here. See about uh, 150. See what it is, will you? 158 feet over here. Hey, Harry and Mitch. Oh, Harry. Harry. Harry's here with Poxy from Happy Days. That's exactly what we do. We know most of the torches by sight. We split up in our teams, cover the town. We keep in touch with Midge by telephone at your office. That's well. Now, if we spot a torchy, we phone Midge, give him the exact location, he calls the FBI, and they come to the right spot. That's great. All right. Good. Chip and Terry, you cover this district here. Right. Taylor and Buck, yeah. you get this street over there. Now, Lug, right over there. That's your spot. And you and I will double-check all the districts in my car. So, well, let's go. Come, come on. on. Take your maps with you. Come on, I knew I should have took Dramamine before we left. I have no idea where we are. Hey, there's one of them now. Let's get him. No, we'll get a four midge place. Ah, forget about midge. There's only one of them. We can handle him. Come on. Says the guy who's been knocked out five times since the serial started. a hug. Leave it on the stairs for Cinderella. Hey, that's Billy and Harry. Hey, Harry. Any luck? Yeah? Nah. 
Yeah, make up your mind. We catch him one of the torches and beat him to a pulp. Good, where'd you leave him, Midge? Now, he got away before we could fall. How could he get away if you beat him up? Well, it was they like beat him up so bad, they knocked themselves like out. When he pulled it right out of his shoe. Gorilla, what did you do with the shoe? I threw it away. Well, whereabouts? We've got to find it. I know where it is. Come on, jump in. Yeah, hurry up. What are you going to do with that old shoe? We're taking it back to the laboratory. There's no telling what you may find on it. You ain't kids. That's what it is, Chip. Only we collect the dust and the clean filter paper. It's too bad there's no mark on the shoe to indicate it's purchased. It may bring out something. Well, I guess it's already now. Go ahead, Davy, and make the cast. So I thought can... you guys were the cast. See those five little grains? Looks like rice to me. That's what I thought. Hey, Murph, go down to the store and get five cents each of every kind of rice they have and be sure to mark the bags. No sooner said than done. Can I chat and go on? He carefully puts his trophy in the plaster to mount on the wall later. The rice seems to be the only thing we can work on, Billy. Yeah, but there's a lot of places he could have picked up that rice. Oh, no. If you get that rice wedged in his shoe, you must have walked through a pile of it. Well, maybe you got something, man. That's groceries, fellas. Sounds good. Now we'll see what kind of rice. No, I hope. What kind is that? Number one. Well, look around, that's a swamp. Number four. Number that's a brown. Hey, I think this is it. Yeah, that looks like the kind, all right. Kind of pretty, huh? The grocery man said this kind comes from China. China? Then hmm. one of the torches must have walked through a pile of Chinese rice. Maybe it was a warehouse where they store Chinese imports. Maybe, Maybe he just got married to a geisha. Terry, give me the classified phone book. Quick. All right. Warehouse. Oh, run away as many as a warehouse. Why don't you shut up? Here they are. They're just five. They specialize in Chinese imports. Oh, good. Let's find the one we want. Okay, let's Come on. Go. Bob, you stay here with Dave. Okay, let's go. Well, that's the last warehouse on the list. And it's the last house on the left, so watch yourselves. It just kills me. Every time Harry wants to do the right thing, Billy says no, and Harry goes, okay. No backbone in that boy. was Agent 86 entering control. Must be a 
trap door or something around here. Yeah, a brain with a button or a lever or something. Well, let's go find it. Oh, wait. We're sure now. This is their headquarters. We all know about the FBI. You're right. Look, Chip. You get to the nearest telephone. Call Harry's uncle. Tell him to bring the whole FBI down here. Got me? Ah, oh, right. Go on. That's it. Send the brain trust to call in reinforcements. Hiya, babe. Well, at least you didn't call her toots. Dirty hit and run driver. Well, I'll get a doc for you. What happened? Oh, car bumped him. You help me get him inside. Come on. All this to hide a hole in the floor? You gotta go down. Taking an awful trap, Billy. So quick. Maybe they all left. Maybe there's some other way out. I don't think we should. Come on, let's risk it. Funny, the occupied sign ain't on. you should realize by now that I love you with all my heart and soul. No, that's absurd. The whole basis of your scheme is wrong. You're mistaken. And if you'll cooperate with There's it. no use, Evan. My allegiance to my country can't be bought. Look, I'm dead. I'm going to go in there and... No, you'll spoil everything. This may be your last chance, Barton. I've heard death threats before. But when usually you they're a little phone. more specific. You can only get it from me while I'm alive. Let's bust in the door. I gotta get my dad out of there. No, we can't. We've gotta wait for the FBI. They should have been here long ago. Well, it didn't work. He knows the strength of his position. Nothing must stop us from getting possession of Barton's formula of that explosive. We've proved it to be the most violent, the most deadly weapon yet invented. With the possible Within exception of social media. Hey, you. Hey, I can see my house from here. Why don't we do it this one? Bring him along, too. All right, he can be my wingman. Now we've got a weapon that will bring Barton to terms. This is Barton's son. Well, splendid. <laughs> bring Colonel Barton in here. your son. There he is. My son. I told you to wait for me at the orphanage and I'd be right back! Let's talk about heaven, we son. Well, you'll have plenty of time for a family reunion, Barton more comfortable circumstances. Provided, of course, you're ready now to give us your formula. My loyalty to my country remains unchanged. Even as this alleged loyalty endangers the life of your son? They're just trying to throw a scare on you, Dad. These guys are all yellow. I'm not so sure, son. They but might be green and purple life. as well. well. That's where you're mistaken, Barton. We never kill unless it's absolutely necessary. 
But this case calls for special treatment. We have an old and very unhealthy dungeon in this building. We shall confine your son there without food or water until you are ready to give us your formula. All right, Fran. You win. I'll give you my formula. Now, you're an intelligent button. And you won't regret it. Don't do it, Dad. Don't sell out to these guys to save my life. It's okay, Dad. You're I right, wasn't sir. hungry anyway. We won't sell out. Barton, you just sealed your son's fate. Take him out of here. What do we do with him? Put him in the dungeon with the other one. Come on. When the time comes, I've got dibs on eating your leg. I can't understand why the G-Man hasn't come. Something must have happened to Jeff. How's the kid? He's been sleeping ever since the doctor gave him that medicine. Oh, that's good. You heard the doctor say that if we let him rest, he'd be all right. Yeah, but he ain't resting now. He started twisting around in sleep, muttering, telephone, telephone. I think we ought to get him out of here. Ah, leave him sleep. Doc knows his business. No, not the table leg. I want to eat your leg. The new shipment of rifles is just It's arrived. Felix Unger. Things will eye. get wacky now. I think we can make it after we get this one out. Oh, Wow, the dungeon was spotless compared to this. I don't know. We're not be better off in the place we came out of. Looks like we're at the bottom of an elevator shaft. Hope that crate ain't working. And speaking of crates... Sure heavy load. I'll say so. I wonder if this old elevator will stand the strain. No telling. Those old cables might break. We better walk down. Craig will stop automatically when it hits the bottom floor. Okay. this epic tale of bad youth gone good. Meanwhile, let me know how I'm doing in the comments, and if you like today's show, give it a thumbs up. My therapist says I crave approval. Will Chip develop amnesia? D does the FBI always wait around for teens to call in tips? Will Billy and Harry cave under the pressure? Make sure to be here on Monday for the final installment of our saga, The Power of Patriotism! Uh, hope to see you then. Oh, my arthritis! Uh, oh. Hey everybody, it's Richard again, and if this is the first time you're viewing my series, you've already missed a lot. So, 
why not subscribe? And that way, you'll never miss another exciting cliffhanging moment. Subscribe today.